Okay, welcome to the Crow Discovery Project. Got a crazy moon UFO here. Um, at the end, I will show you uh, a, a supporter of this channel has gifted me quite a present, and I will cover that at the end, Jupiter. And we're going to start out here with, uh, you may remember Randy from Texas who shot the 11th lunar wave. Um, I want to run this. He's only had a telescope since uh, Christmas time. And these were shot with his handy cam, and he's already catching interesting things. And I want to state for the record, I don't vet UFO footage. Um, if I see something that's a blatant fake, I may chime in. But for the most part, it's my opinion that on all strange objects, you start with human technology and work your way in. But anyhow, here's some interesting objects he shot with the handy cam. But this next footage, um, while I'm not vetting it, it's a crazy piece of footage. Um, the quality's not great. But nonetheless, you're going to be watching the left side here, and I'll arrow it out and box it in. There's the object right there. Keep watching. It's going to travel across the next crater. And, uh, you know, footage like this, if this was crisp, clear, high-def footage, it would be something to see. Um, unfortunately, the quality makes it a bit tough to, uh, to go much further than that. But I wanted to show this. Um, Randy and I have talked about tips on what I've learned on how to get your quality up and a lot of the eyepieces these days are actually optical plastic from China they're junk so you have to be careful with your eyepieces but at any rate his footage is getting better I've seen it but this is a crazy thing you know it looks like it's almost right there at the moon and uh, to be honest I don't think that that's really possible with everything that I've come to think is probably true Nonetheless, here's this footage. So, I mean, everything we get on film helps us learn something. And uh, thank you, Randy. That's a heck of a catch. And, man, it's too bad that wasn't sharp HD because uh, it would be something to see. Anyhow, I went out last night and I shot Jupiter. As you remember, uh, I've been witnessing Jupiter turning blue. Happened uh, back in 2013, I believe, and then I posted footage recently. So what I did last night is I did some experiments. What you're looking at here is what you have to do when you're taking a still to get the moons is overexpose the planet. Otherwise, the moons get lost because they're not bright enough to keep pace with a perfectly focused and... Uh, you know, when you adjust your f-stop, when you get the planetary disk in, the moons disappear. So that's what this is. Now what I'm going to do is just show a still or two here. The seeing was horrible last night. We're having kind of a Santa Ana here. Uh, the wind was kicking up. The air has been very warm. But it's interesting to see the moons in this way. So here is Jupiter through a 12 millimeter eyepiece using a projection method where you project out of the eyepiece into the camera um, and the seeing was so bad that uh, you're not going to get too much better than this on a night like this. Now here's video run with a 26 millimeter eyepiece and I ran it for a long time and I saw no color change although you will notice in the stills and in this video the upper limb uh, maybe from the 9 o'clock all the way over to the 3 o'clock position, there is a very slight blue tinge on every image I took last night. Um, it may be tough for you to see once this is encoded because it's tough to see in the raw video in some of them. Now here I have taken the 12 millimeter eyepiece in the projection system and ran video and you can maybe um, see the blue now. Uh, all the way bowing around from maybe 9 to 3 over the top, there's a slight blue ring. And so it's interesting. There's clearly a lot of blue um, going on in these images, and I'm just not sure what to think. I messed around with the camera, you know, ad nauseum last night, trying to see if I could force a blue change, and I could not. But nonetheless, there is a slight blue lip over the top of this planet. So what I'm going to do here in a second is load a clip so I can demonstrate to you what you have to do to see the moon. So here it's overexposed. You can see all the moons. I'm going to adjust the ISO of the camera and the f-stop, and the moons will disappear, and the planet, you know, the bands and everything on the planet will come into focus. Or maybe I should say whatever the heck we're looking at here. 
and so then I just ran this for quite some time to see and even here you can see a blue tinge around the upper area so here it is thank you Jim from Vegas he has gifted me one hell of a gift in support of my work um, I will talk more about this lens later I don't want to say what it is until I have it in my hands um, it's a hell of a lens and it's from an era gone by in this country when they made quality stuff I posted another article today uh, in response to the New York Times who is spouting nonsense um, so there it is please come check me out on the examiner um, it's really the main way that I have to pay for all the filming editing and everything else that I do basically nonstop um, in the last couple weeks I've been working seven days a week some of those days have been 12 hour days so there it is thanks for following me thank you for the support thank